Hello, and welcome back to Speed Dating for Ghosts. Last time we went on a date with Kyo and had just kind of a chill time, and in the process, finished visiting with everyone in the Room of Liars. We've one more room to go, I believe. Hi, Fran. Thanks. And now, for the Room of Black. The Room of Black isn't really a room at all. It's more of a garden courtyard. The sun beats down as you squint to see what's growing. Rows upon rows of yellow and brown plants, drying and rotting in the sun. What fruit these plants produced shriveled on the vine. But there's a peace to this place. The crickets are chirping. And well beyond the garden, a train passes. You sit at a table opposite an empty chair. The bell rings and a ghost appears. Ooh, I'm a ghost. Ooh, ooh, lol. Wait. LOL! Isn't it great being dead? It's pretty neat, I suppose. Right? Being dead is the best way to live. Andrea. I'm, like, dead. Obviously. I'm also, like, dead. <laughs> Go figure. Let's be dead together. What do you do for fun, Andrea? I haunt places. Like, actually scare people. Nothing too mean. Just, like, flicker lights off and on. Move stuff around so it floats. Push people downstairs. You know, ghost stuff. Fun! Wait, you push people downstairs? Lol. I don't actually. I was just pulling your leg. Or whatever it is you've got. Drea looks around. Man, look at this place. Only ghosts would think a rotting garden is a good place to pick up. And yet you're here. Well, yeah, I'm here. Ever try dating ghosts in the wild? They all just contort and wail. And not in the good way. <laughs> My ex was a nightmare, literally. I assume you mean a literal nightmare. I've gone out with all kinds. Pretty girls in dresses, who carry their own heads. A shadow who refused to let me look directly at him. Being dead is great. It's the other dead people that kill me. Blunt. Where? I could use one. But um, psh. Just, just kidding. Pot does nothing now. Holy does it do nothing. Getting messed up is the only thing I miss about living. When I was alive, I loved jokes about dying. Life sucked. Jerks everywhere. Never enough money. The jerks got the money. I'd be all, the best way to die is now, before death does me in. It should at least buy me dinner. Jokes, you know? But now that I am dead, it just feels right. Like maybe it was meant to be. Which, I guess makes sense, since we all die in junk. The bell rings. Antler Ghost rang that bell thing. That means we change places. See you in a bit. Surprisingly chill. Another ghost appears. Oh, hello there. I'm Hattie. You'll have to forgive me. I'm a little shy. It's just so nice to get out of the home. To see a new face. Uh, I like your face too, which is a really weird thing to say, even in context, but sure, let's go with that. You're too kind. My looks aren't what they were. Guess when you get old, you look it. 
even after you go. I haunt the old folks' home, where I died. Queen Mary's. It's not a nice place to live, let alone die. They treated you poorly? I wouldn't say poorly. The nurses do their best. But they are short-staffed. The residents are frequently neglected. To make Queen Mary's a little better, that is my mission in death. How do you help? Any way I can. I keep watch on vitals. Ring a nurse when needed. Tuck residents in at night. In their final moments, I whisper in their ears. There is more, I say. Just you wait. It's so nice. I never thought death would be like this. As ghosts, we have power over the living. Whether they know it or not, we ought to use that power for good. I agree. Now that you're dead, what do you do with your time? Still figuring that out. It's strange, being dead. There's a Bible verse I think about sometimes. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die, and the fire is not quenched. I still have both my eyes, but what I see isn't like hell. Hell is other people. I've heard that. I don't believe it. I can't imagine anything worse than being alone. Were you alone when you were alive? No, I had a partner. Milton. He's still alive, actually. A resident at the home. The bell rings, and the dogs bark outside. Oh, I guess that's our time. I suppose I will see you again when I come back around. Thank you for the talk. Another ghost appears. Hello. The ghost says nothing, only stares. Uh... Hi? What is it you require? Uh... Companionship? You will not receive companionship from me. I bring only pain. Like a memory that haunts. Like a curse. Do you hurt people? Only those who deserve it. Who are you? My name? I am unknowable. The shadow of a shadow. You can call me Gary. That is who I was. Who I used to be. Tell me about Gary. Gary was a simple man. An accountant. Common. Gary liked the patter of rain. Baseball games and decaffeinated tea. I miss the little things, too. They are gone. Gary is gone. What happened? The ghost's eyes grow wide. He breathes in deeply, remembering something horrible. What's wrong? The knife. I still feel the blade. The life draining out. Emptied. An empty space, where once there was something, now cobwebs, a draft. I'm so sorry, Gary. Do not be sorry. Gary is gone. The bell rings. Your time with Gary is over. He lifts up his fragile frame and shambles over to the next table. He's got problems. What is he looking for?
the second round begins. Everybody's so flippin' gloomy here. I keep thinking, who died? But um, I mean, we could liven it up, maybe. Oh man. Okay. Like a prank? Or maybe we try to scare the other ghosts? Who haunts the haunters, or something? They seem hard to spook. <sighs> You're probably right. That one ghost, especially. The creepy guy with the huge mouth? No. The old lady who looks like a snowball. Horrifying. Hmm. I did see a panicky little ghost. They went into another room. If only they were here. Man, we should just go haunting. Freak out some flesh bags. Give them something to be afraid of. I'd like that. Cool. I don't meet a lot of ghosts like you. Nice ones, I mean. Usually I pal around with, with other poltergeists. So you actually like that I'm nice? I mean, why not? It's not like nice is all you are. Nice is a bonus for me. A personality quirk or whatever. I'm not always nice. Oh, I'm sure. You're so mean. Scary, too. Pfft. Don't make that face. I like you just like you are. I sort of collect weirdos. My friend Beck likes to make corpses wink. At morticians. At open casket funerals. Allison haunts an airport hotel. Guess she likes to watch weird people doing it. I just hang out. Go to shows. Terrorize this normie couple I know. Rich types who moved into my old house. They actually put up a plaque that says live, laugh, love. Blah. How do you terrorize the normies? Possession is fun. When they're asleep, I make the girl sit up in bed and point at the corner of the dark. The guy wakes up, sees what she's pointing at, and freaks out. It wakes her up. Let me try that again. It wakes her up and she freaks out too. It's great. Sometimes. Other times. I want to meet ghosts who aren't like me. I'm sick of doing the same things. But then I actually remember. I like doing those things. I really just want to share them with someone new. I know I probably sound pathetic. The bell rings. Already? This was okay. Come find me after. We'll do something. I'm up for anything. Good. Hello again. How is the speed dating going? Is it everything you hoped it would be? There are some weirdos here. Weirdos? That's not very nice, now is it? Even the living are a little weird. The dead? Well, just look at me. I look like cotton balls. I suppose you're right. You're darn right I'm right. I've been around the bend. Lived longer than most of these other ghosts have been dead. I know a thing or two. Even still, dying has shown me there's still a lot to learn. Always something new worth knowing. Hattie looks at the garden rotting around you. Do you like gardening? I love gardening. I never much cared for flowers. They're beautiful. But they sure don't last. Vegetables are where it's at. I love ones that grow like the Dickens. Squash, snap peas. Spaghetti squash vines are thick and sharp. They will choke other plants if you're not careful. I like tomatoes. I do actually like tomatoes. Tomatoes are finicky plants. They need water to survive, of course. But too much and they'll start to get sick. Now that we're ghosts, I know we don't need to eat. I still like to grow food. Help something live, you know? 
The bell rings. Oop, there's the bell. I'm due at the nursing home tomorrow. I'd be honored if you'd join me. It's not as exciting a date as other ghosts might offer, but it has its rewards. Someone dear to me is taking a turn for the worse. I'm afraid he only has a few days left. I want to make sure he knows they won't be his last. That sounds wonderful, Hattie. I'm pleased that you agree. I'll meet you at Queen Mary's at 7 a.m. Sorry if that's a little early. I'm my best self before noon. Hattie floats over to the next table. She looks back and smiles. What a sweet old lady. Why are you so sorry? What do you mean? When we spoke the first time, you apologized profusely. Why? Uh, I feel bad for you. I do not need your pity. I need to know what happened to me. I only recall slivers of my last moments alive. Emotions. Work. A shadow along the wall. I know these memories are important. I do not know how they fit together. Tell me about the emotions. There was anger, frustration, guilt. Now all I long for is revenge. It pumps through me like blood. But how can I need revenge when I don't know what happened? When I don't know who is to blame? You mentioned a shadow? The shadow was long, dark, but familiar. It crept along the wall. It crept through the office as we worked at night. It came for me. It has a name. Oh, why can't I remember its name? Gary's eyes looked so threatening when you first met him. Now they look sort of sad. Maybe we should go to your old office. I haven't been back. As much as there's something drawing me to that place, there's more pushing me away. I'll be by your side. Sentimental. And yet, knowing I will not do this alone, it helps. I still feel the blade, the life draining out. Join me after the final bell. Together, we will discover why. The bell rings. Gary left a strange transit map behind. Roots you've never seen. A certain stop is circled. Well now, who do we pick? Well, seems like Gary's first on the list, so might as well go with him, right? You arrive at the bus stop where Gary asked to meet. The last bus went by hours ago. Still, there are other ghosts waiting for something. One natters to herself like a squirrel. Another is on the ground, arms around his knees, rocking back and forth. The third ghost has his back turned, staring silently into the darkness. It's Gary. He is wearing a bow tie. I wore a bow tie. You look nice. I wished to look respectable. One must look respectable when meeting one's end. Even for the second time. Also, I thought you would like it. I love it. Gary smiles. Briefly. We are going to the place where I died. The office where I worked as an accountant. Under the tracks. Where the trains grind and the walls shake. That sounds terrible. The dead end of a crooked drive. Sounds spooky. 
Yes. Spooky. A dim, purple light washes over Gary's face. The dead of Nightbus has arrived. This bus is not sanctioned by any city. Its driver is a wisp, a fragment of a broken spirit, trained to perform repetitive tasks. You and the other ghosts get on the bus. There is no fare. You've all paid the price. The office is just as I remember it. I sat in that corner. Accounting is not thrilling work. But it can be exceptionally busy. The papers on Gary's old desk are carefully stacked. It seems he liked to keep things orderly. My partner's desk. Always a mess. Papers and rotting food cover every inch of this other desk. Service. Beg your pardon? Service was my partner. Is... Am I pronouncing that right? Is it service? Is it ceviche? Ceviche Gelka. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with ceviche. Hopefully that's reasonably correct. I apologize if it isn't. What was he like? I worked with the man for 16 years. At first for a bank. We were miserable. So we struck out on our own. Gary sits at Ceviche's desk. He turns on the desk lamp to get a better look at the papers. He was a friend? He was a thief. The green and gold lamp collecting dust on Ceviche's desk casts a long shadow. The shadow begins to move. It creeps along the wall until it hangs squarely over Gary. He was telling our clients they owed money. Money they did not owe. He would pocket it for himself. Small amounts, so I would not notice. But even small numbers do not add up. Gary struggles to stand. He seems troubled by something. When I confronted him, there was a fight. Is that how you died? No. It is... How Servicia died. I... I killed him! Oh god. I still feel the blade. The knife in my hand. I looked for gloves. Bleach. I found them, but... I could not hide what I'd done. Instead, I called the police. Sitting quietly in the dark, I waited for them to arrive. When the officers knocked on the door, I was so scared. They warned me, but I couldn't let go of the weapon. Frozen in place right there in our office. They shot me where I stood. I died here, same as Vicha. At least you know. I am haunted by an act of vengeance. Not the need for it. I am sorry for bringing you here. I am sorry I am not good. Don't be sorry. You are right. Sorry is reserved for those who are not. I must carry this burden. Atone for my act. I take comfort knowing Ceviche is out there. Somewhere. Perhaps seeking his own vengeance. I suppose it is only right that I give it to him. Gary is gone. The office is darker now. On the wall, you see a portrait. Two smiling men. Ceviche and Gary. The day they opened their firm. The office begins to shake as the first train of the day rolls by overhead. But the picture stays fixed to the wall. Well, that was kind of... grim. 
I do like that about this game, that you get a, a wide variety of, of moods in these vignettes. Gary, Spirit of Vengeance, Years Alive, 1961 to 2016. Cause of death, gunshot wound to the chest. Gary worked hard to live a noble life. He saw money as the root of most problems and his accounting practice as a way to help people live with a little less worry. While Gary kept few friends, those who knew him cherished his honesty and quiet humor. A college roommate once affectionately described him as the brand muffin hold the butter. After, after discovering his business partner was stealing from clients, Gary accidentally killed him and was shot by police responding to the sh scene. Terrible shame, that. We'll, uh, we'll see what next time brings us on Speed Dating for Ghosts. I'll see you then. See ya!